So Apple's M5 chip launched, but there was no launch event or announcement video. It was just a website update where three existing products had been updated to this new chip. And it's just the base M5 chip. There's no M5 Max or M5 Pro. Those will probably come in the next year. Uh, this is just a chip drop of three new products or three existing products, the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the iPad Pro, as well as the Vision Pro. And this is the new Vision Pro generation two with the double knit strap. Now this chip is supposed to be really damn good according to Apple. The year on year gains have been very significant. The M1 was already really good, but with M5, we now have over double the performance of M1 and we now have the fastest single core we've seen in the industry and it's all done in the same power envelope. And the thing I find interesting and just funny is that if this was any other company, like imagine Intel or Qualcomm came out with this new chip and it was the fastest single core performance we'd seen in the industry, they would, like there'd be billboards of like Intel congratulating themselves as to how amazing they were. Like there was a time in 2015, just when I started YouTube, when Intel put out these brand new chips year after year, it was like, I think it was Skylake and then KB Lake and then Coffee Lake and then Coffee Lake R. And it was like year after year of five to 7% improvement a year. And they were like, we are so good. Look at our brand new chip. It is 5% better. And they would make a big deal out of it. And for Apple to drop this, a 15% CPU bump and a 30% GPU bump and to only do a website update, it's like Apple's bored of winning. Now, I think for Apple, they recognize that they're like, I'm sure they'd love to sell millions of these and I'm sure they'd love to advertise it like crazy and try to con people into buying the new one. But I think they realize that because Apple Silicon like M1 was already so good, not a lot of people are actually looking to upgrade from previous generations of Apple Silicon. But the M5 is really good. It's faster than the M4 in a bunch of scenarios, some more substantial than others. Now I think a lot of that bump comes from the higher memory bandwidth. The M5 has like 25% higher memory bandwidth than the M4 base. And you also see some nice performance gains in GPU bound tasks. So like gaming is faster, 3D apps are faster. It's very program specific though. Not every app sees massive performance gains, but the biggest and most noticeable improvement is with AI workflows. So Macs have become quite popular over recent years because of the, I guess the energy efficiency and also cost efficiency of certain Mac computers. And this M5 chip is quite good for certain local AI workflows, but it only gets up to 32 gigs of RAM. So if you want something more capable, you have to go for a different kind of chip. Uh, the SSD is faster on the M5 MacBook Pros and faster drives always help with performance. A couple notes on the connections. It's still Wi-Fi 6E, not Wi-Fi 7. And also the three USB-C ports, they are Thunderbolt 4. The MacBook Pros with M4 Pro and M4 Max chips support Thunderbolt 5, but most people do not need that type of connectivity. Uh, now, if you're interested in buying, like the first rule about buying MacBooks, I've said this in multiple videos, is like, if you're someone who's upgrading every year, you're doing it wrong. Like 100% do not upgrade MacBooks yearly. This is crazy. Uh, but the second thing is that if you're on the fence of like, you have a certain budget and you're deciding between more RAM or more storage or more like chip or GPU, I would always err on the side of like RAM. It's very rarely that you will be CPU or GPU bound and you're like, I can't do my work because I just don't have a strong enough chip. Like it's, it's so rare that that's the case. If you're uncertain and you have the budget, I would always lean more towards RAM. Uh, the third thing, uh, right now, if you're interested in buying a MacBook Pro or a MacBook, I would aim for like M2, M3 products. Like that's where you get the biggest discounts for what I would think would be the most, it's like, it's that sweet spot of like price to performance. The M5 stuff, like it is the most expensive. And for most users, you're not gonna see significant gains unless you're doing a lot of local AI. Okay, the iPad Pro. So this is the 13.3 inch device that I have here. This also got the new M5 chip and you get faster performance in apps and games. You get more consistent frame rates in games because you don't have to work as hard to be able to get those high frame rates with the more powerful chip. You get higher memory bandwidth on the M5 iPad Pro. You get more RAM, you get 12 gigs on the lower tier storage, 16 gigs you go for the higher tier storage units. I just get faster storage than before, uh, 120 Hertz display out from the Thunderbolt port. You get Wi-Fi 7, you get fast charging. The faster charging is actually very noticeable when you compare it to the M4 iPad Pro. But I, for one, never found any of the modern iPads to be lacking in performance. Like ever since like M1 and up, 
it's just like, they're so fast. Like there's nothing that I do that could ever stress these things out beyond. But if you are a performance fiend and you edit videos or do music production from your tablet, the M5 product is now available. All right, lastly, the Vision Pro product. So this has also been updated to M5. The weight has not changed despite having a three generation jump in silicon. So this has higher memory bandwidth, a much more capable GPU so you get higher refresh rates, higher pixel density. The entire visual experience is noticeably better on Gen 2. And also you get longer battery life for video playback with the more efficient M5 chip. Now, I'm not a Vision Pro user. I wish I was, but I just can't edit videos on this thing. And when it comes to like watching shows and stuff with my kids and wife, this feels like a very solitary experience anytime I've pulled it out. However, the spatial photos have always looked really cool on Vision Pro. You can take like regular 2D photos from your camera roll and then convert them into these spatial photos. And the M5 chip does it a little bit faster. Uh, lastly, the strap, the new dual knit loop is so much better than the original solo knit. I cannot express how much better this thing is. Uh, the way this thing sits is so much more comfortable. It's a heavier strap and there's a counterweight in the back now. Uh, and there's also a top strap, which is gonna mess with your hair, unfortunately. It does flatten it down a lot. But in terms of just like usability and comfort, this is so much better and it is backwards compatible. Like if you want to, you can just uh, pick up one of these if you're a Vision Pro user and uh, get it for your generation one product. Uh, but that is the M5 lineup, a MacBook Pro, an iPad Pro, and the new Vision Pro, all with a crazy powerful chip. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video.